I feel like the new generation don't know the old Atlanta. They really don't know it like that. They made a herd from it, like from some of the homeboys, the old uh, OGs in the hood, big homies of the hood, you know what I'm saying, all their uncles and fathers, but they don't really know, you know what I'm saying. I was a young nigga looking up to all the OGs back then, you know what I'm saying, like I'm one of the guys, like to the young generation, I'll be an OG right now, you know what I'm saying, like I'll be a big homie right now, you know what I'm saying, and I grew up in that old Atlanta. But one of the reasons I decided to even make this documentary on that is to clear some misunderstandings, man, and get shed some light from how I seen it, you know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't a documentary about me. I felt like I could, I know enough, I seen enough to be able to cover, you know, a lot about the hoods, a lot about the projects, um, you know, in the early 90s and uh, in the 80s. And see, this is another thing, man. It's like, I don't see enough, like, on social media or YouTube, you know what I'm saying, all the video channels, video sites or whatever. Well, you know, you got guys, you know, the OGs or dudes that call themselves big homies. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear them really talking about, you know, how, how the real Atlanta was or how the old Atlanta really was. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that could be lost in, in history, man. You know what I'm saying? If, if don't nobody cover it. And I ain't just saying, like, this is my responsibility. I just chose to do it. You know what I'm saying? And reason being because I'm around a lot of young guys, man. You know what I'm saying? Doing this music and... And they don't really be knowing, man. They don't heard stories and and they still be don't even know. Like, it's like a lot of details hadn't a lot of the details haven't been given to them. You know what I'm saying? They just only know about the crack era and and they heard somewhat of the projects. You know what I'm saying? And like when they was growing up, like the projects was being torn down. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the only thing that really been covered in fine detail, man, with would be Freaknik, cause Freaknik was big, and, and and when the Olympics came to Atlanta, it was big. You know what I'm saying? They covered it well, but what they didn't know is, man, it was it was it was getting it was real out here in the streets, man. Like it, it was real. You know what I'm saying? And and it's like it's hard for people outside of Atlanta to see any real street shit happening in the, in Atlanta when all they ever seen was Freaknik and. And the Olympics and, and they never really cover the hoods, man. They never, they never listen, man. I've been all over Atlanta, bro. I've been everywhere from Atlanta to the Cater. I spent most of my time on, on the east in, in in East Atlanta, man, zone six, the Cater area. I spent most of my my uh, growing up there. But my in my early years, man, I, I I all through Atlanta, man. We started at Kimberly Court uh apartments, man, and they they gone. We started in Eagle Home apartments and they gone. But man, I can say this, I seen a lot of killing and a lot of drug dealing, man. And we ain't had too many gangs like that. We have very few gangs. The biggest gang that I think I can remember when I was young was uh Defo, I mean down by law, man. And that was like in East Lake Metal. That guy shot him and he fell dead right before my face. The 650 unit housing project was never great, but when drugs took over and gangs claimed turf. It went from bad to horrible in a hurry. They would shoot and cut and stab and kill each other. That's what they did. By 1995, the crime rate was 18 times the national average. Oh, man, so that was in East Atlanta, but I ain't see too many gangs. Like, we ain't really, like, run like that. It was more a hood thing, a zone thing. You know what I'm saying? Well, well neighbors hood might go against other neighborhoods and shit like that. And, and I seen niggas getting killed regular man gunplay regular man gambling regular drugs regular pimping and horn regular all the things that i know are uh, going on in, that's being covered in in, in in other states and cities um like chicago and in and, and detroit and new york and all these places like that but it was never covered like that about atlanta and see the cold thing is you you, you know you got what you may say, the new Atlanta, and and, and and not to be downplaying the new Atlanta, man. I mean, it is what it is. And it's like, um, over time, it, you know, you, you got, you got certain communities, man, in which, 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 uh, like I told you, it was projects everywhere. We had projects everywhere, man. And once they start tearing them down, once they start tearing them down, man, and start building 
uh, new communities where a lot of white people start moving in, rich people start move, moving in, like middle class people start moving in and start pushing the blacks out. And along with that, you know, you had a lot of, um, you know, homosexuals moving in, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just being real, man. You know what I'm saying? We only got very few hoods that still exist to this day. Everything been changed. You know what I'm saying? So this is what the people see, man. This is what the outside people only see. They only see that. They only know... Can't nobody come from another state and city, come down here and visit uh, 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 Techwood, you know what I'm saying, Bankhead, uh, uh, Bankhead Court, you know what I'm saying, Bowen Home, you know what I mean, like I said, Egan Home, Kimberly Court, all these projects that I knew of, you know what I'm saying, the Vikings off Glenwood, they, they, none of that exists at this point. So what they will come and see if they visit those areas is... Uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of white people that exist there or, or homosexuals. And I ain't got nothing against homosexuals. I'm just telling what exists. So the thing is, it, it puts a stigma on, on on the city as being like, you know, this is what this is. It's a lot of gays there. It's a lot of this and that. And at the end of the day, it's you know, they don't understand. It's, it's some real street niggas, real thorough, solid niggas that exist still in the city. They, they, it's just in, in certain areas, you know what I'm saying, that may still exist, you know what I'm saying, but they there, and it's and, 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 and they real, you know what I'm saying, but when I was growing up, shit, the whole west side of Atlanta was all black, and it was all gutter, it was all hood, it was all, all that, all that street shit right there, you know what I'm saying, and when you hit the east side, man, you got, you had like East Hampton, you had like, um, you know, certain boroughs like Lyon Street on the way to Austin Drive, in, you know the certain parts of Glenwood all that shit was like real street and gutter all you seen was the street shit that you see in Chicago the street seat shit that you see in New Orleans you seen the shit here in Atlanta it was going on in Atlanta when I grew up as a young guy man like my memories are clear you know what I'm saying everything is vivid like I remember almost everything man and the very first uh, projects that we stayed in that I can remember was Eagle Home Apartments and my grandmother stayed in Kimberly Court and my aunties and uncles and cousins and all of them stayed in East Lake Meadows. So we should go to all, you know, those three different projects often. And that's why I had got my upbringing. And I remember in Egon Apartments, man, in East Lake Meadows, it was like the apartment was like all brick, man, like solid brick apartments, man. You know what I'm saying? Which used to hold the heat. It was hot as fuck in those apartments, I remember. We used to have um, that's they didn't they didn't do too good with cleaning up the the uh, projects, you know what I'm saying, uh, or keeping the maintenance on the projects. So we didn't really have too much ventilation or air conditioning and nothing like that. So we used to have these big ass fans and shit. Everybody used to have them in their windows and shit. Like everybody had them in their motherfucking windows and shit. And that would blow the you know um, take some of the heat out of the apartments, man. Cool it off. I remember that shit, man. And and mind you, we ain't had the internet and all that shit back then in those those times, man. You know what I'm saying? So we stayed outside. We stayed, the kids and shit stayed outside, man. And like, we stayed outside playing and shit, you know what I'm saying? Playing ball and high go seek and all that shit that kids do. We used to be outside a lot, you know what I'm saying? So being outside a lot, you see a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying, that going on, man. You, you couldn't... You couldn't do that but see the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if motherfuckers selling drugs, it's obvious. You know what I'm saying? You know who the drug dealers was because shit. They the ones that appear to have the money. They the ones that had the money. They the one that had the cars. They the one that had the jury, the clothes and shit. So you seen that shit. And 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 I looked up to that shit. You know what I'm saying? That, that's all we had to look up to. You know what I'm saying? Those were like our mentors and shit because that's all we had. But I remember seeing a lot of that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? What I do remember as well, man, is like, we had a big ass porches and shit and generators that used to be outside in the projects and shit, man. And it wasn't no grass. Like, wasn't no grass. It was all dirt, man. Like, it was like all dirt, nigga. They weren't doing no maintenance on the yards and gardening and shit. Like, there was all motherfucking dirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, just dirt and brick. Like, that was the problem. Man. Dirt and brick and shit. Like, I remember that shit. And we used to play in that shit all the time. And, um, we used to. See the fiends, man, like, you know, those that was doing the drugs, the heroin and the crack, you know what I'm saying? Really mostly crack, man. I ain't know much about heroin like that, you know what I'm saying? 
and 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 that probably what they was doing when I seen them shooting it up. It was probably the hell run shit, but I ain't know no better. All I knew about was crack, you know what I'm saying? Because that what was popular, you know what I'm saying? Like niggas selling crack or crack dealer, you know what I'm saying? It was popular in those times, but you see the fiends everywhere, you know, out in public, like smoking, you know what I'm saying? Or they might be ducked off in the cuts and shit. Cause we used to have like little breeways and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And you, you we had to go through the little cuts and little breeway, little shortcuts and shit, and you would see them smoking and shit. And it was so normal, like it ain't like then they had you like scared or amazed or some shit. You already knew what they was doing. And I think the time that I kind of really paid attention to that, you know what I'm saying, in fine detail, is when my auntie, I seen my auntie doing that shit, man. My auntie was smoking that shit. And I, I seen it, you know what I'm saying? And 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 I was like, damn. I was like, okay, if you ain't selling drugs, then you own the drugs. You know what I'm saying? And and it was like, that was it. You own the drug or you selling the drugs. And I already knew then I was gonna make a decision in my mind about my life because I paid attention. I had a I had a bit of intelligence, so I kinda knew what was what was going on. I knew the ones that were selling the shit, the ones that was you know, prospering or whatever, or, or, or whatever you may say. You know what I'm saying? Cause they looked like they had it. They was having. You know what I'm saying? And the one that was on the shit was looking bad. You know what I'm saying? They were like losing. You see what I'm saying? So I already knew I ain't finna be on this shit. I ain't smoking shit. You know what I'm saying? If I'ma do anything, I'ma sell the shit. You know what I'm saying? So and and, and unfortunately for us in in those times, in in those times, it was building in us. A desire to want to be drug dealers You know what I'm saying And that's not a good thing That You know of course that's a bad thing But that's what was going on in those times Because the drug dealers had all the popularity In the projects That just like In, in, other, in other states You know what I'm saying where, where that's going on Or what's going on real heavy It's like you know, you can go on the internet and you can see a lot of stories been covered, a lot of big drug dealers and just like like Al Poe, Frank Lucas, and, and many more that's it throughout uh, the country. And, you know, Freeway, uh, Freeway Rick Ross, you know what I'm saying? Like guys like that that was in, 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 in uh, on the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, all we knew, all I knew when growing up, you know, it was a, f a few names in our city that was big, and the name that I know I remember was Terry White. Like, that's the name I used to hear all the time growing up. But Terry White got the money, he got the dope. He was this big time dude, he had, the, had millions and all that. Like, I didn't know nothing about all these other guys until now, like YouTube, you know, you go on some shit and you see, you hear about Alpo them and all that. Like, I ain't know nothing about that. We knew about Terry White. We knew about the dude from Atlanta that had it. You know what I'm saying? And there was a few other guys, but Terry Wright is the name that I remember the most. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that was our thing in Atlanta, man. You know what I'm saying? And the drug game was heavy. I remember it was, uh, you know, being in the projects, man, when, when, when I when I was in my teenage years. And, you know, those those years when you want to start trying to get out and, and, and be grown and start making some money. Because, like I said, we was poor, so I had to kind of make some changes in the home. You know what I'm saying? To do something for myself. So, of course... I did what I knew to do, and that's to get out and, and, and learn that game right there and get into that game. But when I first ventured out into that game, it was a bunch of drug dealers. Like, it wasn't a few drug dealers or, or one guy had the block sold up or whatever. If it was one or two guys that really had it, it was about a hundred guys in the project that was serving them. And they may be getting these supply from maybe one or two guys or shit like that. But it was a man, it was a bunch of young niggas out there. Like I wanted, I like, I I know for a fact that I was going to school, man, with probably like ten dudes, and all of us was selling drugs, bro. Like all of us were selling drugs, just what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I grew up. You know what I'm saying? That was the thing. I know the drug game was heavy, man. You know what I'm saying? And you got to think, everybody talking about how to. Cocaine was going crazy in the 80s and shit like that. And I, I made my debut, my introduction to the game in the early 90s. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's around the same time I went to prison, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I can't say in, 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 in reference to that being just an unfortunate life, man, because that was part of why I went to prison. You know what I'm saying?
and I got the game from from my uncle. Like that's how I first learned the game from my uncle, man. Um, in Kimberly Court Apartments, man. It, it was like, and like I said, I was a young dude. I'm already out watching and this, that, and all that. And I ain't have much, you know what I'm saying? But I wanted some things, you know what I'm saying? And, and when you're a teenager in high school, you know, you want attention. You want the fly clothes. You want the girls to pay attention to you. And I was like, I was old, bumming ass nigga when I was, when I was little because I ain't had shit. And I was like, bro, I can't get no female like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't get no attention like this. So what I did was, man, one weekend, man, we over there. Mama dropped us off over there. And my uncle... He, he, he was one of the big guys in Kimberly Court Apartments, man. Like, he was one of the main dudes out there. I don't want to say his name, but he was one of the main dudes. And I stepped to him, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit, oh, got there, give me a shot. And, and he had already been dealing with my older brother. My older brother, man, was going crazy out here on that shit, man. He was like, that nigga was similar to Alpo. Like, when I watched the Alpo story, I seen my motherfucking brother, man. Because that's how he was all flashy and shit, man, and didn't give a fuck and shoot niggas and all this old crazy shit like Alpo was doing. Same thing my motherfucking brother was doing. But my brother wasn't a motherfucking snitch. Anyway. Yo. And, but anyway, I stepped to my uncle. And um, I was like, uncle, give me a shot. And my aunt, it's like he knew that I was for real because he had already been fucking my brother. And he was like, he knew my brother was a go-getter. And the thing about the older cats that was out there that was doing the weight game and shit like that in the game, they had all the young niggas down. Like, they were putting all the young niggas down. And, and one of the reasons why is because they knew, you know, the young niggas ain't gonna get locked up like that. You know what I'm saying? They might get a spanking or some shit behind. You know what I'm saying? But they ain't finna go to prison for a long time and shit like that. So they knew what they was doing. I got with him. And it was the first time I ever seen what that shit looked like. like I didn't even know what the shit looked like, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? I knew what was going on, but I didn't know what it looked like. You know what I'm saying? So got with my uncle. He actually came and picked me up. He had, at the time, he had like a, uh, I think it was like a Ford Explorer or some shit. It was like when, when, the, when the SUVs was kind of getting big in, in the city and shit. Like the niggas was coming out of the, the old school cars and they started getting into the SUVs and shit. And... And he pulled up, it had like, it had rims on it and shit. And I'm like, shit, this shit about to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm all excited and shit. So I get in the car with him and we ride out to one of his uh, locations he had. And when I go in that motherfucker with him and he sit me down and he tell his people that, you know, he about to put me down. I walk in that motherfucker, man, you can smell that shit. Like, you can actually smell that shit. You can smell the dope, man. And I'm like, what the fuck? And you see people, like, you got people in the kitchen doing their thing, and then you got the people bagging the shit up. And it ain't like New York, like up in New York, where they had the, like, the little vials and shit. Now, here they had the bags, the, the triple uh, zero bags, the triple zero five bags and shit. Niggas know what I'm talking about. If you're from London, from then, you had those. You know what I'm saying? And they was sitting down there with a fucking thousand bags and bagging that shit up. And, and I seen a big ass block look like butter. It, it looked like parquet motherfucking butter, man. You know what I'm saying? They chopping that shit up. And Unc gave me, first he asked me like which, what, what I think I could move or some shit like this. And I'm like, I'm so dumbfounded. Like, cause I ain't never did shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't even know how this shit go really. So I was like, shit, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I remember I'm saying, oh, shit, I can move whatever. You know what I'm saying? I, I know I was sounding stupid in the motherfucking on eyes. So what he did was he gave me a $500 bone. I remember that shit. It was that what it was called, a $500 bone. So like five dime bags in the motherfucker. He gave it to me in like in a, like a, 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 a paper bag, a brown paper bag. I remember that shit. But he gave it to me and he took me back to the hood. Thing about it, I'm getting out of the car, I got the bag in my hand. Uh, like, man, talk that shit, put it in your drawers or something. Like, that's how dumb I was to the game. I'm finna walk around with this shit, like, this shit legal. Like, I ain't even thinking about police, I ain't thinking about none of this shit right now. So, took the bag, went to my grandma house, and, and my grandma went to church ladies and shit. Like, she go, she used to go to church five days a week type shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I couldn't, she couldn't know shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I used to hide this shit, like, in the closet, under the couch, some shit like that. So, I said, fuck it, I'm gonna wait till nighttime. Cause all this shit was going on daytime. 
So I waited till nightfall and I dealt that, you know what I'm saying? And and then during them time you couldn't be out like that. You know what I'm saying? Like as a younger. When the street light came on, yeah, supposed to be in, you know what I'm saying? So once I started, you know, like I was in the teenage years, started trying to get out and be grown and shit like that. I knew my grandma was gonna end up eventually questioning why the fuck I'm still out in the street lights on. So I ain't give a fuck. I want some money. Plus I wanted to do what the niggas was doing. So I did it. Get out. I tried to fucking do the shit. Like, and the shit was just crazy, man. Cause I remember this shit, man. I remember trying to, I was in this abandoned apartment, man. And um, cause that's why I used to see the crap fiends that. You know what I'm saying? As a kid, we used to be going in the band apartment. They'd be in there smoking the shit. So I knew if I go in one of them motherfuckers, there's going to be some crap fiends in the motherfucker. And I'll, I'm going to get off the bone. So I go in that motherfucker. They end up fucking and everything in the motherfucker, man. You got you got drug dealers fucking the crap fiends, man. I remember that fucking shit, bro. So I'm in that motherfucker. I remember one of Jay coming in. One of, the, one of those crack smokers came in. And he was like, what you got, bro? I pulled out like... The whole bond, and I think I reached in there and pulled out like 10 dimes or some shit like that and put it in my hand and showed him. And he was just looking over shit. That nigga snatched that shit out of my hand and just took all running and shit. Like, man, like he knew I was lame to the game. Like, he knew what was going on. I was a little nigga, scrawny looking little nigga and shit like that. He just peeled. I'm trying to run behind his ass. He gone. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh shit, man. This shit don't went left. So, I knew then, you know what I'm saying? Instant kicked in. I was like, okay, well, I can't do it like this no more. I gotta pull them motherfuckers one at a time. Serve these motherfuckers one at a time. I can't take no chance. I can't have Aunt mad with me. He ain't gonna trouble me no more. He ain't gonna fuck with me. All this shit like this, right? So, I had another little partner of mine rolling with me. Like, he wasn't even selling drugs, but he knew all the motherfucking fiends and shit. So, he used to take me all around all the fiends. His, his auntie and his mama used to smoke shit, so he was taking me everywhere. He really helped me get off the bomb shit and got my face out of So, off that shit, called my aunt, uh, told him I already came, picked me up, snatched the paper. Now, mind you, in them days, they wasn't even, nigga wasn't really making no money like that. Well, you can make some money, but it was like, they was slaving the nigga out there with that shit, bro. Like, they were doing like 20 on a hundred. Like you twenty dollars, you gotta sell a hundred dollar worth of that shit to get twenty dollars. Like that's how they were playing you at. Cause and you had to go with that shit because you ain't had no plug. You ain't know how to get that shit. You know what I'm saying? If you had a little money by yourself, you know what I'm saying? So you had to go through them. So they were playing that shit like that. They were four to fifty hundred dollar slab game shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They, that's how they was doing in the shit. So and so a nigga, you gotta think if if they selling twenty off a of, of hundred, you know what I'm saying? I mean twenty dollars, you gotta make a hundred to get twenty dollars. $500 worth of shit will only get me $100. $1,000 worth of shit will only get me $200. You see what I'm saying? That mean I had to sell $4,000 worth of shit to get $800. You know what I'm saying? They were killing the nigga. You know what I'm saying? And they know what they were fucking doing. And that's how they was fucking eating, man. You know what I'm saying? So little niggas really want to eat. You know what I'm saying? So I remember that, that took place like that. But when I really kind of got out there real cold and, and put my foot in the water real heavy was when um is the the moment my mama left the west side we went to she moved to glenwood she moved off terry mill off glenwood and terry mill so it's a, it was a um a neighborhood called terry mill i remember this shit man and uh she had a little bit of his house too man and we were staying out there, and like I told you, my brother had been doing his thing, man. My older brother been doing his thing. He out here. He done fucked around and bumped into some guys from Florida, from Miami. I remember this shit, man. He bumped into some guys from Miami. They knew about him. They heard about him. And uh, because they knew he was out here doing his thing, man. Like I told you, he was like, like a nigga that reminded me, like the airport reminded me of my brother. You know what I'm saying? Because he was out here flashing and he was doing his thing. He didn't give a fuck. Like he was young and didn't give a fuck. And, but all the big niggas wanted to fuck with him because they knew he could move that shit. And he knew everybody. You know what I'm saying? And he done fucked around and got into uh, the Met, the Miami guys. I remember this shit, man. And uh, they, was the, they was doing the time that's how I know it so well. And I never told the story, so 
you know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of excited to give the story, man, because it meant a lot to me at the time, and, and it was Atlanta history. But there was during the time when the Miami boys was up here. Uh, everybody know about that shit back in them days when they was here trying to take over the city, man. You know what I'm saying? With, with the drug game. And, and they was going into a lot of the projects, trying to put it down, and it wasn't really happening. Like, niggas in Atlanta, in the city was uh, getting them niggas, getting rid of them niggas. Like, getting them niggas up out of here, man. And that's, like I said, man, that's why I, I, I felt the need to kind of talk about a lot of this stuff because I ain't never really seen it covered, man. I, I tried to Google some shit to just see if there was some knowledge about a lot of this stuff, and I didn't see it, man. And, and again, this is Atlanta history, man. You know what I'm saying? But but um, my brother played a part in that whole thing, too, with them getting here, making money here, and, and putting it down here because... Atlanta really like we didn't have the cocaine like that. We had to get it from the guys in Florida. Like that's where the shit was coming from. The shit was coming from Florida. You know what I'm saying? So, but they knew we were making a lot of money up here. We probably were making more money here than they was making there. You know what I'm saying? So niggas was trying to get up here and put their thing down, and the niggas in the shit weren't having the shit. They was they was clapping at these niggas, man, and getting rid of. Them. And my brother, man, they slit used my brother. And my brother, he was a, he was he's so much of a hustler, and and he was so much about his paper, and you know he he didn't care who he fucked with with it. It was who had it and who got the quality and who, and, and 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 the cheaper price. And of course, the shit coming from Florida, they they had the better shit and 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 the prices were cheaper. And my brother was able to really kind of become like the nigga. You know what I'm saying, and, and, and get the, and, and really get it, get this shit going. And they was using my brother to try to get in in Atlanta. And people didn't know my mama house is one of the houses, one of the safe houses they was using. And my mother, she ended up like she worked a lot, man. She worked two jobs. She was never there. I talked about that before in a lot of interviews. So she was never really there, man. And that's when they'll make their moves in my mom's house. That's when they'll cook the shit up in my mama's house. And, and, and uh, you know, cut the shit up and all that and do the thing. And my brother would, they would use my brother. Like, they would actually use my brother like a guinea pig, you know what I'm saying? And he'll go and take wood. And he'll go on on Stewart and Cleveland and all the blocks, you know. He'll go in Kimberly Court. He'll go on the west side. And, and he'll work his plays. And the people out there didn't know that the work was actually coming from the Miami boys. Like, did nobody know that shit? I knew it, you know what I'm saying? I was there around it, I seen it. They was actually using me as a nigga to hide the shit. Like, we had, my mama had a whole bunch of woods in the back of her house. And and by me being a kid and it used to play in the woods a lot and shit like that in the back of my mama's house, I used to know where all the little spots was and the hiding spots. So I take the drawers and go hide the shit. I hide it from to, to the point where them niggas didn't even know what the shit was and know how to get the shit. You know what I'm saying? Long story short, man. Um, yeah, that 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 took place where they was using my brother and getting the drawers here, and it was going down big, man. And uh, what happened with that situation? How they actually died out, really? Is um, I remember on one particular time, man. And this is how I actually kind of got on. There was one particular time when they was bringing the shit to my mama house, and um. It was another guy on another block from my mama's house that was doing business with them too and do, doing business with my brother. And what happened was, I guess a, one of the deals went bad or something, or he didn't come in with the money or something. It was something crazy that happened like that. And they shot up the house. You know what I'm saying? I remember the shit, and you know we gonna know it because it was a block away from my mom's house. So they shot up the house, and we hear it, and everybody know about it. They end up hitting the nigga. They end up hitting the wrong nigga, to my understanding. They, they hit a nigga that was on the porch, and they were really, the, the target, they didn't even hit the target. And that's when everything went left for them. Because um, after that happened, and the guy that got hit, everybody knew that guy in the neighborhood. Everybody liked the guy in the neighborhood. So, you know, everybody going to start pointing at who they thought did it. And... All of that came back to my brother and the, and, and the Miami boys. Like, and the thing about it is, man, shit died down for maybe like two weeks after it happened. My brother kind of laid low. They stopped coming around a little bit. They were still coming stash and shit, but they stopped coming around. And um, I remember 
the police, like, it, they had to have been staking out and watching them, man, because it never came to the house, never knocked on the door, nothing, for like two weeks. They watched them to the point where they knew when they was there. And the moment that they came to kind of do their thing at the house, that's when the feds came in. And I remember that shit. They came in, I was little. They put guns to my head, I was young. They put guns to my sister's head. She was about 10 years old. And my mama, that's why it was so, it's so vivid because that was the most tragic moment of my life at that time. Because, you know, when you got, you you're that young and, and you got, you know, the police got guns to your head and they telling everybody to get out and all that. You know, it's a scary moment for a kid, man. So, yeah, that happened. And that's what ended that whole Miami boy shit, really. Like, that you, ain't, you didn't hear nothing else from them. They they weren't even coming around no more. And I remember that. I remember all of that right there, man. And, and my brother really didn't know much about them guys as far as what they was doing until he got locked up and he, for, the, for the shooting that happened on the other block. And like I said, like after that, that was my 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 moment to kind of come up in the game a little bit because see what happened was, man. A lot of people don't know this unless you grew up with me. All the guys in the hood that grew up with me know about this. You know what I'm saying? Like they know. And when when they got locked up, my brother got locked up, and, and the Miami boys got locked up. But mind you, like I told you, I was this nigga that was hiding the shit. You know what I'm saying? So I hid the shit. So when they got when the, when the feds came in on them. And got them, they didn't get no drugs. They just got the, they got the guns, like them stupid ass niggas still had the guns. And and they snatched everybody up and snatched my brother up and they went down for that. And like I said, I still had the drugs. Now, I'm gonna tell you what them niggas was doing though. Like, they were sending niggas from, from, from Florida up here trying to see if they can get me to give them the shit. Now see, I, like I said, I was young, I ain't know no better. I, I would have probably gave them the shit. I was just glad the shit was over. We back to a peaceful, peaceful life. Them niggas gone, this, that, and all that. But my brother called me from prison. And the thing about it is he was trying to beat the case. And he was paying the little money he did have. He was paying on the lawyer. And he was running out of money. So he made me go, because he knew I knew where everything was. He made me go look and see where it was there. And to tell him, when he called back. So I went and grabbed the shit. They had like big boxes of fucking shit. And the thing about it, it wasn't like no kilos, no shit like that. They had everything broke down already. But it was big boxes of shit already broke down. And I did it and he called back and I told him or whatever. And he told me, don't give them niggas the shit. Don't give them shit. Don't, they ain't helping them get out, don't give them shit. And, and I think it was more, I think he was more upset with the fact that he understood what was going on after that he had been used and 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 at the end of the day he ended up um, now he in prison for 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 uh, shooting a guy all this type of stuff like that so, and they left him in there like that so a lot of that was like hell no don't give him shit so and i respect my older brother he was like a father to me so at the end of the day what he told me is what i was with i almost scared of him than them niggas so i didn't give a fuck about that I didn't give them to him. Every time they came, they came maybe like three times. Asking me to look for it and this, that, and I'll, I'll go in the woods and walk right past that fucking shit, acting like it's gone. I, I the lad, the what, what made them really stop coming was the last time they came, I told the guy that the police got it. I had to, I had to come up with a lie because I was kind of getting scared a little bit. I was like, they coming too many times, man. They gonna think, they gonna think I'm lying. So I was like, man, listen, the police came and, and went in the wood with dogs and shit like that and got the shit. And shit, I ain't hear nothing else from them niggas. Not knowing I got all the shit, man. Like, I had all the shit. And maybe like a month or so went past. And and that's when we start playing around with the shit. Like, I made sure my brother had we had. He had money. I ain't even tell my brother. I didn't even know much about this shit to even know how much shit I had. So I could have told him... I had 10, 20 ounces and probably had about 10 bricks. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know the shit. Like, I didn't even know how to really weigh that shit up. I ain't know nothing about the shit. Like I told you, what they had in the box was already broken down, so there was no need for me to weigh it up. And once he got what he got, and I gave his girlfriend the money to, to, for him to put on his books and shit like that, we took the shit and put it in the neighborhoods, man. And 
All the young niggas in that neighborhood was able to eat and get off and shit like that. Only thing about the shit was young, was dumb, we didn't know what we had, and we didn't know what to do with the money either. And even if we did made make a whole lot of money, we didn't even know how to re-up. Like we was we was dumb to the game. Like we ain't know how to get in touch with another plug and keep the shit consistent going. Nah. But I know that shit went on for probably like three, four months. That's how much shit we fucking had nonstop. I was giving niggas thousand dollar bonds and and telling niggas just give me a two hundred dollar bet. This your bone. This is this for you. This your bone. Get off and you do your thing. Cause I want to see all my niggas eat. I want to see all my own boy eat. Like you know that was a thing. Like we was like family. We were like brothers. Like we ain't had a thing like today. We ain't get into none of that. It was like if I got this shit because all of us was broke. All of our mamas like didn't really have much, and all our mamas knew each other. And we stayed at each other's houses, spent the night with each other, shit like that. So we was like brothers. So once I had that, it was like give this shit to the hood, give it to the, my partners. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't sit on, I couldn't sell it all. I didn't give a fuck about really having, keeping it all to myself. You know what I'm saying? As long as I was able to eat, pay a few bills and shit like that, and help mom and take care of my brother and sister, that was all that mattered to me. And and man, I'm telling you, man, we out here, man. I remember this one dude, man, pull up in the bins because I was trying to get some big money. We was trying to go downtown that time. Like, going downtown was this thing when I was growing up. Like, I'm going to the mall. We still going to the malls. And we was going downtown. You know, everybody would meet up downtown and shit like that. So we'd go downtown, get fresh, and, 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 and everybody try to look good for the females and shit like that. And we knew we had a little paper, man. So I was like, shit, we finna go shopping. Fuck it. And we'd catch the motor bus. Like, niggas weren't caring about cars at the time, man. You know what I'm saying? That show you how stupid we were. We wanted to get on the motherfucking bus where everybody could see us. You know what I'm saying? With the money. You know what I'm saying? We'll be niggas on the bus, three, four, five thousand dollars in our pocket, but we on the model bus. Like we ain't give a fuck, man. But I remember this one. Long story short, man. This, this moment I want, I want to take a whole bunch of money, hit downtown and, and go shopping like crazy. So I want to get rid of as much shit I could that day. And. I remember this one dude, my partner was like, I knew, he, he, he knew a dude, I think he was his uncle or something like that. And he was like, uh, you know, I could turn you on to him. So I was like, shit, get him pull up. He pulled up and I was like, shit, you want to buy some shit? And you know that, I, you know, I ain't know about this shit, I ain't know how to talk about this shit. I couldn't say shit. You want to buy a zip? You want to buy some? You want to buy a hat? I ain't know how to kick the shit. So I was like, you want to buy some shit? That no nigga probably looking at me like, the fuck this nigga talking about? So. And me not giving a fuck though, I you know I showed him shit, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to buy some of this shit, and home ain't seen it. He grabbed it, he start, he looked at it, start smelling the shit, and he like, what you want for this? You know what I'm saying? Like the nigga knew knew how to play me, like he ain't just pulled no money out. The nigga asked me, he knew I was gonna put a dry ass ticket on that shit. So I was like, shit, give me like three, four hundred dollars. I think I sold it, man, probably like two, three ounces, man. I'm talking about. I, was, I you know I ain't know didn't give a fuck I didn't know, and 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 he um he bought the shit and pulled off fast as hell though like this nigga Harry up got the shit you know what I'm saying to the point why like God damn he the police some shit like the way he pulled off he pulled off and came back in probably less than thirty minutes to buy like two more I think he gave me like eight hundred dollars and I gave him two big ass cookies I had. I might have gave that man five, six ounces, man, for like $800. That's how stupid I was. Like, that's how much shit I had, but I was I was so stupid that I didn't even know the game. You know what I'm saying? And I did all that shit so I can just get the money and we go downtown and go shopping. And um, long story short, man, and, you know, so you'll know how, how this thing went with us is um, and how it died and how we fell on that is, is, um, a lot of the older guys had, had got knowledge that we had this shit, man. And they they start trying to, you know, push up on us and get the shit from us. And they used to lie to us and shit like that. Like, they'd come to me. And they knew I was the nigga, so niggas had to talk to me to get it. You know what I'm saying? So that's me in my mama's house. And I'm talking about older niggas, man. These older niggas, man. Be sitting in my mama's house, man. Niggas we looked up to and shit and be like, bro, goddamn, give me a bomb or some shit like that. Like, I need a bomb. I need to goddamn eat and all this shit. And, and I give a nigga a bomb, 
shit, I don't know, it probably it could have been a five thousand dollar bond. I know it was big ass bonds when nigga had them bad up and shit. They had ground bonds, man. I had found that out later when it when 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 my partner mama used to smoke and she used to try to she you know she was one of them, them crack addicts that used to try to sell it and smoke it. And she needed some shit to get off with. And and I took something up the four and she put it on the scale and she told me one of the bags was a gram. So that means I had big ass Ziploc bags that was grams that I was selling for dimes. But I ain't know I didn't fucking know, man. Like I ain't no shit about that game, bro. But I, I learned that shit like through that, you know what I'm saying? And um Yeah, the older niggas come get the bonds and I give them the bonds. And like I said, they should lie. Them niggas just tell me they'll be back and, and, and this, that cause I tell niggas shit, I want this and this, this, such and shit off this this bond. Man, them niggas wasn't coming back. Them niggas running off with that shit. Like, they already knew. They, these niggas young, stupid. They got all this dope. Man, we ain't getting nigga shit. And they were from the neighborhood. They knew we knew them. And that probably one of the reasons why them niggas didn't rob our ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could have got robbed like a motherfucker countless times. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why niggas didn't rob us. But what got us into the gunplay part of the game was after the older niggas was getting shit from us and... They wouldn't turn the shit in. Like, we'll go check them niggas on some shit. Like, man, where the money? This them nigga looking at us like, boy, I got you. Saying little shit. Throwing the nigga old, but looking at her like, little nigga, you don't get the fuck on. So, we knew we needed some straps. You know what I'm saying? Like, we needed guns then. You know what I'm saying? Because we felt like at some point, nigga gonna try to rob her. Uh, really, niggas was slick robbing her. They were just doing it in, in the slick way. You know what I'm saying? So, we, we already knew then. Like, God damn, boy, we gotta be on point. We gotta get some guns and shit like that. And you know, like I said, I was in the young nigga club, so it was probably about seven, eight of us that was out there thorough in you know in that street shit. So all of us were like together. So all of us were like, fuck it, we gonna get some straps. So well, how we used to get them, man, cause you couldn't just buy straps like that. You know what I'm saying? Like how niggas is day, niggas go buy niggas actually walk in the motherfucking punch shop and buy straps. Like we couldn't do that shit. So we had Two, two niggas, man. I remember these niggas, man. I, don't, I ain't put them names out there. But one nigga, he's breaking houses and shit. And I'm talking about breaking everybody motherfucking house in the neighborhood. Like, niggas, he know. He breaking in this shit. I don't know. He's breaking this shit. And he find the straps. He the one used to, was supplying the straps. Because he was breaking in people's houses. He breaking their motherfucking houses, steal their pistols and shit and food and whatever else he was getting from the people. But he'll bring us the straps. You know what I'm saying? For free. Like, we weren't even paying for him. He just break, cause he, he knew he was one of the young niggas like us. He was actually rolling with us, but he wasn't, he wasn't out in the street doing, selling drugs. So he was just breaking the house that we like to do, steal cars and breaking houses. So when he come up on the straps, he bring them to us. I remember we had 380s. We had uh, uh, sold off shotguns, single shot 16 gauge. We had Mac 11s, Mac 10s. We had, uh, we had uh, what's that gun, that uh, Tech 9. We had the Tech 9, that when the Tech 9 was popular and shit like that. We had all those straps like that. You know, that's when the Glock first came out. Like, when it very first came out, like, when it was popular, plastic Glock and shit, we had that shit. Shadow bring us all the motherfucking straps. So we strapped up like a motherfucker. It, it got to a point where we had too many pistols. Like, every one of us had, like, three, four pistols a piece and shit. I remember this shit, man. And that's when we got on the gully shit, gully shit, brother. You know, when we was really, really grimy at that time, because around the time we started getting the pistols, I think we was running out of dope then. Like, we ain't even really had that much dope at the time. You know what I'm saying? And, and the little that I did have left, I wasn't getting the weight of niggas. I was keeping shit for myself. So it got to a point where it wasn't even about the money no more. It's about keeping what we had, the little that we did have. So, and, 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 um, at that time, man, when, like I said, when that, when that kind of ran out and the young niggas I was running with, once they weren't really selling dope no more, couldn't even get that shit, niggas start resulting to robbing the shit. Like, niggas robbing niggas. Like, you got to remind, I told niggas had big straps, a whole bunch of them. So, niggas start robbing. They start meet other niggas from the neighborhood, especially like East Lake Meadow. We stayed like up the street from East Lake Meadows in the, in the, in the, in the housing area. And so, we, we was running with those niggas. We running with the niggas from the meadow. So, and they was already on that type of shit right there, that robbing shit, you know what I'm saying, that grime shit. I never did it, but my niggas did, you know what I'm saying? So we was in those days right there. So you had to keep a strap, like you had to be strapped up, man, or, or you felt like you would be a victim to the shit, like somebody gonna get your ass, especially when they thought you had some money. 
And once I realized that my niggas was on that rob and shit, I started being a little more low key. Like I ain't want to let niggas know I had no money no more. I started telling niggas I had, I had dope. I actually start, started selling drugs. And by then I kind of knew the game a little bit more and I was able to meet niggas I can get some shit from. I stopped selling drugs in, in my neighborhood and I started going to other niggas' neighborhood, like Kirkwood and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? And my, cause my auntie stayed over there. So I started going over there and doing my thing over there. And um, and long story short, man, that's how I ended up getting fucked up and going to prison because I went over there and I was doing my thing over there, man. And I was trying to get away from my block so niggas wouldn't know what I had and, 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 and some shit went wrong. And I went to uh, to uh, um, that neighborhood over there. And, you know, you being in a whole nother neighborhood, niggas really don't know you like that, you know what I'm saying? They don't really fuck with you like that, you know, like my like how my brothers did over on Glenwood. I'm over there. And... Um, and I knew niggas over there because I grew up over there too, but it wasn't the same as Glenwood. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the same as what, what, how I knew niggas from that side. And so I was on my toes at that time. You know what I'm saying? I kept straps with me. You know what I'm saying? I stayed paranoid, man. Like I was extra like paranoid and shit like that. And and, uh, and I was moving on the paranoia shit. And, uh, you know, in one moment, some shit happened. And like I told you, I was extra paranoid. And... A nigga tried me on some shit, and I'm already thinking like that. I said, oh, shit, this shit going left. And it was older niggas. It was always the older niggas that we had to look out for, really. It wasn't even the young niggas. It was the older niggas that was trying us because they felt like we was young. We no shit. We ain't had no hard. We going to do shit. And, and that's when I end up, uh, me and nigga got into it and whatever. And I, like I told you, I was it's paranoid. I'm thinking nigga finna do me. And so one thing led to another, and I end up in, in you know, I did it to him first, you did? And I went to prison for that shit. And the thing about it is around that time, I went to prison, which it was in the early 90s. All the young niggas my age was going to prison too for the same shit. Either it was going to prison for carjacking, that's when that carjacking shit had really got known in the city. That's when Atlanta was at, at the, uh, it was the murder capital. Like you can Google that shit and know in the early 90s when it was at its highest. And either they was going to jail for, for armed robbery, um, carjacking, burglary, or murder. You know what I'm saying? So I was in up with all the young niggas then at the time that I grew up with. And long story short, man, and I hope this helped y'all kind of get a, a glimpse. Because I, I can't tell it all. I, I'm, I'm probably going to do another documentary soon, man, where I can get a lot of other people my age or a little under me that kind of seen some things that happened around that time can help cover some things from their viewpoint. Because, you know, I don't know it all. I'm just giving you a little bit of from what I seen. But like, at that time, man, I went to prison. I, I did my 10 years in prison. I got out in the early 2000, man. And when I got came home, all the projects, most of the projects was gone. I think I, when I was coming home, um, my sister stayed on 2nd Avenue. And, it, and that's right down the street from, from East Lake Meadow. So I stayed at my sister's house for maybe a good two months, maybe. Not really knowing where I was, man. And the crazy part, I'm back in my same hood. But the shit had changed so drastically that I didn't even know where I was. I thought I was staying somewhere far out. In East Lake Meadows, they had to turn that into some some like high scale golf course shit. You know what I'm saying? And of course I ain't know that was gonna be East Lake Meadows. You know what I'm saying? Like until my sister told me. And it blew my mind. I think the moment she told me that I was going to store you some groceries or something. And, um, and she told me that is when I realized how things had changed. I had tears in my eyes. I remember that shit. I was like, oh shit, I've been gone. It, it, made, it made me realize how long I had been gone and I cried. And I started moving around a little bit. And I got out, I think it was around the time when they were just getting rid of uh, Born Home and, and Bankhead Court. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I started talking to people, man. And, and, and trying to see what's going on. And they were just telling about how a lot of the places are gone. Carver Home, Herner Home, all the homes that I knew about, all the ghettos, man, all the projects that I grew up in, it, it, was, it was all gone, you know what I'm saying? So uh, maybe a year after that, man, you know, once I started kind of living again and moving around, and I started trying to visit to certain places. I went to Kirkwood, man, the same place where, the, where, where my murder took place, to, to revisit, to see some things. And to 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 remember some things, you know what I'm saying? To to remember, I want to remember so I know what not to return. 
And I just went to the, and I seen Kirkwood, ain't even Kirkwood. You know what I'm saying? Like, we used to call it a uh, little Mexico. You know what I'm saying? That was when it used to be crazy, you know? And there's a whole bunch of middle middle class house homes and shit. Like, they, they got them all, all pretty and shit and nothing but, like, white people. You don't even really see black people. You know what I'm saying? All that is over. It was like, oh, man, it was, like, unbelievable, man. I was like, God damn. This shit has changed drastically, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to end this shit like this here, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, I, you know, I know I can't cover this entirely, man. So I hope I did pretty good, man. You know what I'm saying? Being an OG, man. But I can say, man, we needed to change. You know what I'm saying? I miss that shit, though, man, because I miss the real. I miss, you know, being around my people, the people that I know. You know what I'm saying? I miss my childhood, you know what I'm saying? The good parts of my childhood, I miss a lot of that. But I knew we needed to change though, man. You know what I'm saying? Because too much was going on, man. It was too much poverty, man. It was like the people didn't care about us. It was like we were secluded, stuck in these one, these little areas and shit. And we never really left the areas and shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe once or twice a year, we might go visit somebody or go to one of the attractions in, within the city, but we stayed stuck in those projects, man. So we needed change to for the better of our people, man. You know what I'm saying? That's just me being honest, man. So we, we needed it. You know what I'm saying? So I can appreciate it, though. You know what I'm saying? And to come home to something new, I felt like God would just invite me to a whole new world because I wasn't saying I came home. I, I, I wasn't the same guy anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm a new guy. I see different. I, I feel different. You know, and I didn't. I, it wasn't no need for me to come back to the same hood, the same ghetto. So, all that to say, man. You know what I'm saying? I come from that real Atlanta shit. You know what I'm saying? I come from that cold Atlanta shit, that real street shit. You know what I'm saying? And and not saying that you know it don't exist today because i of course it does you know what i'm saying we know that it's a bunch of shit going on out here it's a bunch of killing still a bunch of drug dealers. it's a lot of you know, some things that you just can't change but i just want to cover you know as much as i possibly can and hopefully it'll be a reference that people can use to, to, to. i know you're gonna have some haters man i, I know i'm gonna have it i'm gonna have some motherfucking haters i'm gonna have some people saying nah i did this listen my nigga hey one thing a nigga can't take from me is my childhood. They can't take from me my youth, my history, my life, what I came from. They can't take that away from me. No, no man can take that away from me. If a nigga don't want me speaking on that shit, nigga, that's your motherfucking problem. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna speak on that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I know it's a, a lot of niggas that grew up like I grew up, came from where I came from. Appreciate hearing some of the things too, man, because they remember a lot of this shit too. You know, and they probably been waiting on somebody kind of speak about or mention some of the things. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, on, on, a, on a positive note, man, it wasn't to, to uh, entertain any negativity. It's just to show you how negatively I see things going on. You know what I'm saying? When I go, and what I didn't see is a lot of white people and a lot of homosexuals. That's some shit I didn't see. And I ain't got nothing against white people. I ain't got nothing against homosexuals. But I didn't see those people. I didn't see these kind of people. Man. So, you know what I'm saying? I, my, the neighborhoods and, and the city that I know of, you know, those people didn't exist.